It feels amazing. No. I've tested every major wearable sensor and digital health device. I even shared the videos with all of you. But sometimes I get the feedback that, okay, but this company doesn't ship to my country. That company sells a very expensive device. So I thought I would use the Joker card. I would go on demo.com and find digital health, lifestyle health gadgets. I shared the list of devices with my LinkedIn community and the Temu marketing director reached out to me personally saying that they would send me the package. So there is no sponsorship, no advertisements for this video, but I got the package from Temu for free. And I'm very grateful to that. Let's see what kind of digital health gadgets you can find on Temu.com. The first device had to be a smart blood pressure monitor. That's the most commonly used technology in lifestyle and healthcare management. And we've been testing a whole evolution of blood pressure monitors. So I thought it could be a smartwatch or uh, such a sensor. I was very excited about this. And then it arrived and it was so light. I was flabbergasted. What kind of technology it could be? Are you ready? It was empty. It was just a blood pressure case. I haven't lost my mind. I went back to the link and it said blood pressure device $15. The pictures featured a, blood, a smart blood pressure device. I reached out to the Temu marketing director and he said that was a mistake and that indeed just a case as it says at the very end of the description and the product is not available anymore. So of course, nobody removed the device from the case. It was just a case in the first place, but all of us made a mistake about that. Hopefully and fortunately, nobody else, no customer we would have the same experience because that case is not available anymore. It means I cannot test and compare a smart blood pressure monitor from Temu, but I guarantee you I have even better devices to show you. The second device I chose was an alcohol breathalyzer, or as the device is called, an alcohol tester. I used one before. It was a great device, very easy to use. This one could estimate your alco blood alcohol level with police grade accuracy. So I was curious what a similar but much cheaper device can do. Here it is. I was surprised by how tiny the device is. Look at that. That's it. And there is one button, power. I click on it. It warms up. 12 seconds, 10 seconds. Then I will have to blow air into the device and it will measure my blood alcohol level. One, and now. My blood alcohol level is zero. That's it. I also use it after one glass of wine. It showed more than zero, but so it works. But of course I cannot professionally compare it to a other blood alcohol breathalyzer. But I think it's good enough and it seems to be working. Look, for this price, you cannot expect a device to go through clinical trials and be published in peer-reviewed studies. I think it's good enough. I do all kinds of sports and exercises. So every two weeks, I go to have a massage. I have a manual therapist. She is excellent, but sometimes she has to use a manual copying device on me when I have like muscle ache. And I told her, let's upgrade that to something digital. So I, I found a pressure copying device, which does exactly what you think it could do. I charged it already. This is the, like the charger controller part. There is a nice yin yang symbol here. And this is the copying device. Look, I thought I would not like to test it on my body first. Let's just test it on my palm. So I clicked the power button. Okay. And then copying. And it started creating a vacuum and it doesn't stop. Actually, a, a bit, <laughs> maybe dangerous. But to, and I can't even turn it off. To imagine this device being used on me, even by a professional therapist, I would run out of the house. Maybe it works if you know how to use it, but, but it just seems to be so powerful that, you know, after a few seconds, I got reddish skin already. And I know that's how copying works. But this one is like copying 5.0. I cannot imagine how much time a therapist would need to learn how to use it properly. Give me your palm. Give, give it to me. Look, this is just your palm, right? Nothing, nothing dangerous. Tell me when it's too much. <laughs> it doesn't come off. Look. <laughs> I almost forgot. 
description of this electric coupling device. Please do not use it under the following conditions. Pregnancy, skin damage, patients taking drugs, patients with infectious diseases, skin sensitivities, okay. Patients with a tumor, local damage, traumatic fracture, okay. Patients with abnormal heart, cerebral nerves, I have cerebral nerves. I guess they meant some kind of nerve damage, but okay. Blood pressure. I have a blood pressure. A patient who is being treated by a doctor or feels abnormal. I felt abnormal using the device. Nobody is able to use the device based on their own description. Personally, I think that for a general customer to use it, I think it's even dangerous, but I guarantee you, I will bring it to my massage therapist and she will professionally test it on me and I will share the experience later. For the next device, I want to do something about stress levels and having a better quality sleep. I tested this called uh, Spire many years ago. It went on my belt and it measured stress levels throughout the day and through an app it could communicate with you. So I had this pulse stimulation. It says decompress microcurrent, sounds amazing. No dependence, quality sleep, sleep and safe use. So you get this tiny, very cute looking device with this background, it's charged already. There's only one button for powering it up. Okay, there are two modes, sleep and excited. I want to be excited. I have to hold it in my palm and there are levels. One, two, three, five, four, six. It's like getting a tiny bit electrocuted. You must give it a try. People will think that I make these things up. Enjoy, you will feel more excited immediately. How about that? It's like getting tiny shocks, right? It's a very bad experience. I don't feel excited by, I mean, I get, technically I get excited, but I don't feel well using it. No, it's like, uh, now let me, electric. now let me show you something. I changed them, come back here. I changed the modes. It's sleep. It will make you sleep better. Same exact feeling. <laughs> Same tiny electrocutions, microcurrents, to be honest here. That's just, that's far away from Feels feeling. Like something wrong with this. I cannot imagine going to bed and, oh, I should use the device again to have a good night's sleep. Let's shock myself with tiny, you know, microcurrents for about 50 minutes. I will sleep better. I would not recommend you buying a device that gives you microcurrents and sort of electrocutes you. Jokes aside, the science behind such devices is still quite shaky. I mean, when it comes to vagus nerve stimulators, at least there are some peer-reviewed papers about that, but I have never seen a scientific paper describing such a device having any health benefit or positive impact on someone's life. So until evidence-based medicine grows behind that, let's keep them in the product boxes and even back on the shelves in the factories. Look. I had to order something silly. Not a digital health device, not something rooted in science, something that looked fun. And I thought, what else if not a V, V face beauty device? And it's actually something very simple. I will try it for you, of course. I will sacrifice myself for you. Let's see what it can do. It seems to be pretty simple to set it up. It's charged, it arrived charged. The usual one power button plus minus, and there are nine modes like automatic, Massage, acupuncture, hammering, heating, circulate A and B, and charging. Let's see in action. Please don't laugh. I do it for science. It's vibrating on my face. The point I'm trying to make is that it doesn't even say what the device is intended to be doing. There are these modes, but so what? So maybe the conclusion here can be that if the product doesn't even say what the technology is designed to be doing, maybe it wouldn't be a good decision to order that, right? Because you will look like me. Let's see a smart ring. I've tested really good, a bit expensive smart rings before, like Aura, YHE and all these. So I thought, why not buy a much cheaper smart ring device called Smart Ring? That's the brand. Well, to be honest with you, that's not the design I'm looking for. Plus, it comes in one size. And Hopefully it will fit. It looks like a huge golden ring. It's a bit bigger than this uh, much more expensive device. And it was relatively easy to set this up. I got an app running with that based on a QR code. There is one thing I found when I started charging the ring. It says Little Meatball Smart Ring. That's the name of the rings. Little Meatball, size 12. My only problem with the, the app, and that's why you cannot see any steps or fitness activity throughout the day, is that 
it wants to get permission for running in the background my telephone, call records, short messages, notice, notifications, address book, storage, location information, nearby devices, internet access, and camera. And I said, no, thank you. So I cannot really test it. I'm just, I don't put enough trust into that system. But otherwise, same weight, almost the same size, a bit different regarding design. I can only imagine that at least these companies producing these more expensive devices have papers in the background. They have technological claims and we can go after those claims. But the little meatball is something we know nothing about. And maybe it's good enough for fitness tracking, but if you want something like sleep tracking, something more serious about the health tracking journey, I don't advise you to buy the little meatball for now. I used to have tiny sensors, variables on my clothes, on my belt to improve my posture, but they required an application to be running on a smartphone. So I thought, how about something analog, something much easier? And this is for improving my posture. Let's see. <laughs> My posture is perfect. Actually, it works. I mean, it's I'm not saying it's not comfortable. It's a bit tight, but I will keep this posture for the entire time. This thing is on me. However, you cannot put it on yourself. You need some external help. But from now on, for the whole day, I will stand like this. As a conclusion, I hope you get the message that in no way I try to mock the devices coming from Temu. I'm actually very grateful to Temu for being so transparent and open about this experiment. As you can see, some of these worked relatively well. Actually, one or two were quite surprisingly good. Others look a bit funny, if not dangerous for general use. But in general, the message I would like you to get about this experiment is that it's extremely hard to find good evidence-based digital health technologies that we can use to improve our health or disease management. My advice would be to either discuss what kind of technology you're about to buy with your primary care physician, or if you don't have such a partner in your life and healthcare, then please reach out to us at The Medical Futurist. That's my job to help you out with this. Just leave a comment that I'm about to buy this or that device. I will have an opinion. I've tested so many of them. I've come across so many technological failures. I I've been challenged by data privacy, even ethical issues, hardware problems, everything you can imagine. So if I can help you, I will be happy to help you find a technology that can help you live a healthier and longer life. In general, I will always look at what the company's claims are, how they can back the claims that what their technology can do. I will always look for peer-reviewed studies and even clinical trials. But of course, in the case of some devices, we cannot expect such a high level of standard. So for those, I will look into like, at least to have a C approval, if not a regulatory approval from a country's healthcare system. I will look into the major features, whether it's believable what the company is claiming the technology can do or not, and how we can make sure that the technology is safe to, to be used and it's efficient enough so that it can contribute to our general well-being. That's the whole idea behind the whole digital health paradigm shift. I truly hope that this experiment just brought some attention to this issue and you and I will create a supportive community where you will feel that you get the help you need to find really affordable but still efficient digital health technologies. And until then, let me put back my posture vest. If you like this video, please subscribe below to get notified about every single new video we come up with. And also please go to medicalfuturist.thinkific.com where you will find our two courses, the digital health course and our newest one, Introduction to Artificial Intelligence in Medicine and Healthcare. See you there.